Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of the podcast. It's me plus you, it's us. My name is Elaine. And my name is Kwame. And today we're going to be having a conversation Doing about some marriage counseling. <laughs> that's if, if we had marriage counseling. Yes. So for context, we didn't go through the traditional uh, method of um, counseling and they're just not traditional. I wouldn't say traditional, like, you know, the religious route. If I should mm-hmm. put it that way. But maybe for context, explain what is, how this religious route looks like in Ghana. That's what I'm saying. So the religious route often um, involves some counseling if you're going to get married. So I'm looking at my camera. <laughs> so if you're going to get married, you, you do some counseling, mm-hmm. couples counseling before you get married because, yeah. of course, you've not been married before. So they need to take you through or advise you on what to expect, what to note, certain things that may pop up, what will you do if it does pop up? Yeah. So that's what often happens. You do this a few months Mm -hmm. uh, before you get married. Okay. We didn't go through that. We didn't do that. No. Yeah. But uh, through a friend of our channel and a friend of work, um, he is leading some counseling in his church. And he shared the scenarios with us. So he said that we should try it out. So here we are trying it out. Yeah. yeah, and before we go on, I'm just letting Elaine know that her camera is there. Oh, but I was looking here. Okay. Her yeah, camera is there if she wants to look at people and talk to them, because she she keeps turning here like, okay, I want to look here, but I don't want to look here. So her camera is there. She's, I know. She's looking really pretty over there as well. Mm. So I will introduce the scenario. So the theme for the day is building stronger marital bonds so we'll have a scenario and then an uncomfortable question and then we discuss so the first scenario imagine a married couple where the husband tends to bottle up his stress and pressure from work never expressing his emotions or seeking support from his spouse over time this lack of healthy coping mechanism leads to increased tension and distance in their marriage question one uncomfortable question one how do you handle stress and pressure in your life? Are there any ways in which your coping mechanisms have negatively impacted your marriage? <gasps> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle stress in your life? Are there any ways your unspoken coping mechanisms have... Uh, uh, in which your coping mechaniz- ni- mechanisms... Wow, difficult word. Have negatively impacted your marriage. Ooh! Spill the juice. Okay, so how do I handle how do I handle stress in my life? Um, often, I I like to distract myself. Hmm, that that's, is very right. <laughs> that's how I handle stress. And distracting and how? By distracting myself, I mean I I'm on my phone a lot. Hmm. Yeah, but um, there's a difficulty in the like the lines being blurred and everything because I'm on my phone a lot because I'm also working. Yeah. And then I'm on my phone a lot when I feel stressed also to distract myself. Yeah. So because I work a lot online, I post my stuff out there, people will contact me and you know, I'm a freelancer, so I get inspiration, I get contacts, I get like I meet new people and everything online. I'm always on my phone, technically. Yeah. yeah. And when I'm also stressed out as well, then you find me watching a lot of funny videos and just distracting myself. That's basically not, you know, speaking up. Yeah. And when we also have arguments and I don't feel like talking as well, I retreat and then yeah. I, I stay on my phone, yeah. basically. So it's more like, you know, I, I, I go into my shell and by my shell is on my screen. Yeah. And then I'm quiet. I'm by myself. I'm just in, enjoying. So where it, it becomes a problem is where you have to say, or I have to say. Because well, I, don't, I don't know. If you want to share, sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, where it becomes a problem is Elaine is, is, I mean, you are the kind of person who likes to open up things. You like to, like, you know, if this is a map mm-hmm. and it's crumpled, your, your technique is to open up the map and then, you know, let's just straighten it out and see where the issue is and see where yeah, we're going. I like to talk through things. Things. Mm-hmm. And it's not always... <laughs> it's this not is al- where the difference comes in. It's not always welcome. It's not always wanted. It's not always um, 
I don't always feel like it. Like I, I, I sometimes want to sulk or be in my bubble or be in my yeah. hole for a bit. And mm, can I can I comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I come in? <laughs> so I think there there are multiple levels to it. So first, uh, Kwame's coping mechanism is distracting. Yeah. So whenever he's on his phone. Uh, it is unclear whether he is coping with something or that he's working or that he's like chilling. So that on itself, sometimes I have to ask like, are you working? Like I want to say something or I want to discuss something. Are you yeah. working? Or I say like, I don't know if now is the right time. So we have a been able to check in on that. Um, but it's also difficult because sometimes it looks, it seems, I'm not saying it is, like he's not interested in the topic because he's he's on his phone afterwards or he's not like it doesn't look like he's actively doing something with the conversation we've had before so do you get me yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like oh he's just on his phone so that i had to learn that it might not be what it looks like it might not be that he's not interested. It might be that he's interested, but he has to take a break from it in order to process it. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. And then... No, but there's also another level to after that. Yeah, I, I mean... I wasn't done with okay, the levels. Okay, okay. No, go ahead. Come in. No, no, no. No, no you can't. No, you finish yours. I don't know if I... I think you took me... <laughs> okay. So I... I it, it's yeah. You. But what I was going to say is that the reason why you also often come in uh, to make sure that we do is based on our experiences from the past. I sometimes don't revisit it. Yes. So that's another tricky thing. Yeah. Grammy can move on without it being really nitty gritty talked about. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to discuss every single angle. And that's also tiring for him because. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we, we're trying to find that balance. But for me, it gives me a lot of clarity to also hear your perspective on it. Yeah. Um, and it also confirms, I mean, it affirms me and also where I stand and whether I'm not jumping to conclusions that are maybe too rigid or... Far-fetched. Far-fetched or like, uh, because I feel something, I'm, I'm running to that conclusion. Yeah, so that you don't um, assume wrongly. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm cautious with that. So it helps me to talk through things and then, yeah. So my coping mechanism, if people didn't figure it out yet, I, I need to sit in it at, I mean, I can distract myself up to some point, but I also know I have to face certain things. Yeah. So that is, comes with, uh, emotions. So I can be angry or I can be sad. It's mostly sad. Uh, or disappointed, or I'm um, frustrated with myself. Um, those, I think, those are the things I I I feel, and then I just have to sit in it. So how it has impacted you negatively? I think for you it can be frustrating that we have to talk to everything. Um, yeah, that can be tiring. I assume. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes it's tiring. But on the other hand, I think because Grammy is like distraction and not necessarily want to revisit stuff. And I am like all about the nitty gritty and talking through things. I think we kind of find the balance. We are finding. It took a while to find the balance, but we are finding the balance because now I'm also more open to listening and having the conversation. I don't enjoy it as much, but yeah. I'm more open. In the beginning, I was very, um, I was blocking it. I was very defensive about, mm, yeah. you know it's really not necessary. I can't do this now. I don't want to do it. Or yeah. it's not necessary for us to even go that deep into it. Let's just, you know, it's more like conflict aversion in a way. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But over time, I think we are, we are learning to find a balance. And I'm also very much, uh, much, much different from when we started. I mean, it's been how many years? It's a long time. Eight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think you've really grown in that sense. Yeah. Like you want to try for yeah. us to talk things through and i think you've also experienced the benefit of talking things through because yes. then there's nothing hanging over yeah us and the, the, there's no tension in the room there's no you know because elaine can't like function after things have not been <laughs> i find done. it really hard to trust that things 
are fine when we are not fine. And that's a, that's a major difference between us. And I've also talked already about this with my friends, so I can share it like confidently. Like, okay, Kwame has this foundation of we're good. Like, no matter what. Like, it's like this foundation underneath anything. Yeah. Like, no matter what happens, we I are know, good. I know I love you. I know I want to yes. be with you. I know you're the... Like, like it's this yeah. rock-solid foundation. Yeah. I'm not saying I don't feel the same way. I feel the same way about this guy. Don't worry. But for me, I want to actively, like... Affirm. Affirm and do things together and, like, have quality time and build on it and learn from it. And, like, it's more an active way on more of a verb for me while well, loving for you it just is like you have decided that yes, loving is like it's something has clicked and that will be there forever yeah. and i trust that it, that that's true but for me it's not like i don't believe in us or like but i it's for me it's an activity to always keep on growing to always work on it and that's also give a different different dynamic because when we have conflict or we have a confrontation afterwards, I find it really hard to trust that we're good. <laughs> like I want to you need assurance. Confirm, yeah. You need assurance. It's more like you yes. need assurance than anything. But which is it's fair. also yeah, but it's also annoying for you because sometimes you don't feel like giving that assurance because you're still with a certain emotion that yeah. doesn't necessarily means that you have to step out of it and then confirm me that everything is fine. Yeah. So I have to take care of your aff affirmation before. Yeah. So that is negatively impacted because it is my insecurity that you have to deal with in yeah. order for it. So that's... But again, it's been a long time and we've been managing. Yeah. So now, I don't know if you want to share this with us. I think what? so <laughs> at some point because I needed to be reaffirmed otherwise I couldn't even sleep <laughs> I don't know if this is good to put out on YouTube but sometimes you have an argument like it's heated and then Kwame would just turn around and sleep I'm sure <laughs> many ladies can I don't want to generalize but you have certain people in the relationship can, that can just turn around and sleep and you have people who cannot no, like I, can, I can turn around and sleep not like uh I don't cut the arguments. Like I, I just let you know that, look, it's 11 p.m. We are both tired. <laughs> Let's yes. just sleep and talk about this tomorrow yes. morning. Because that works for you. But it doesn't work for me. So I would be very heated, like in the bed, like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't sleep. And now I'm all alone with these big feelings. So then we... Because that happened... I hate that so much. What? Well, we have to... Like, finish the big feelings before sleep. I <laughs> No, not mixed feelings. Big feelings. Big, yes, yeah, I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> no, but um, I know you, don't, you don't, don't like that. So we came up with the following solution. <laughs> Is that... After an argument and it's getting late and Kwame feels like tapping out because this is not constructive. And often he's right. I'm not saying he's, he's wrong. Often it's not constructive anymore. But I still have those feelings. So what do you want me to do? Then we would say like, okay, this may be a good time to pause. So we would say not stop, but pause. pause. So that it's, it will be addressed tomorrow. So I need that assurance. And then we would hug for 30 seconds. <laughs> That it's okay. <laughs> that we're it's good. okay. We are good. So I need to feel that we're good. Yes, so we, how do we okay. do that? Like, uh, of course, good. we're not counting down like 30, 29. No, we we're just hold for, for a, a little while. bit. Yeah. And then Kwame would turn around and sleep. And I would also be able try to and try to sleep. <laughs> right? I just got a hug. We'll be fine. Um, but we don't need that as much anymore lately. I mean, we are barely sleeping anyway. So. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's the reason, but we we needed that at some point. Yeah. And I think when you are distracted, you're also not looking for that physical connection. Mm -hmm. Well, when I feel vulnerable after confrontation or an argument or s some new insight we gained and it's, it still needs to settle, yeah. I really long for that physical, like, oh, we're good and just feeling you close, like, yeah. oh, we're still close. You don't really need that. Like, you're so independent in a way yeah but also the practicality of it i just want to sleep you know yeah but that's yeah. i i don't if you keep doing that your hair is gonna look funky it's okay 
It actually mm-hmm. is okay. It's fine. Okay, yeah. let's go to the second scenario. Yeah. So we, we have planned on doing three scenarios, but where the time is, even from this one, I can see from our recorder, even for one scenario, I think we're just going to do scenario two. Okay. And then we'll do part two of this conversation. We're like, we're just More marriage counseling yeah. for us, because as you can see, we need a lot of work. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're okay. working on ourselves. We're working on ourselves for sure. Okay, another scenario. Consider a couple who have been married for several years, like us, three and counting, and are facing, is it three? Yeah. Are facing a difficult financial situation. The husband prioritizes finding solutions and providing for the family, but unintentionally overlooks his wife's emotional well being. Reflect on, oh no. Yes, reflect on whether you prioritize your spouse's emotional well-being during challenging times and think about how you actively support them and work on building emotional intimacy, drawing from the experience of this couple. So the question is, do you prioritize your spouse's emotional well-being? How do you support them during difficult times? And do you actively work on building emotional intimacy? Yeah, I think this one comes from where we just came from. No, no. It does. It relates it, but this is now about the financial. I think it's a really good topic because financials bring out certain things in people that you didn't even know you were aware of. Like it has to do a lot with the feeling of security and that's why it gets so heated often. Yeah. But the scenario is the guy is Is facing some financial challenges. And also the scenario puts the guy in a very traditional role. Yes. So he feels... But maybe that also can also be a coping mechanism that when you're faced with challenges, you, you retreat into work into, and retreat into what you have known maybe from your own uh, growing up. So if your mom and dad weren't very traditional, then you feel like you have to provide. Yeah. So it's possible. This is such a, a, a thin ice type of thing to navigate because uh, on the one hand, maybe most men, most men feel like if I'm financially okay, I can think. And if I can think, I can manage my emotions. Mm-hmm. But like, I can't even breathe if I feel that I can't provide for my family. Mm-hmm. And that in itself makes the person retreat or go into solution, solution, solution. While yeah. the wife also thinks that, you know what? I love you for you. We'll I love what we have. We're okay. I need you to be here with us as in now that you have a child or something or with me yeah. here and now. And that's where the clash is. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like, well, I mean, we're assuming that the guy is occupied with finding solutions for yes. that financial situation. Yes. And because of that, case. he's not available to... Emotionally available. Emotionally available to His spouse. the impact it has on, on the spouse. Because she might not even be looking for solutions. That's another one. <laughs> yeah, she might not be looking for solutions. But the solu- that's what I'm saying, that the, 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 the hard wiring... Of the average man. Yeah. Is when money is in my pocket, everything else is calm. Yeah, especially in, I mean... I can see my wife because I'm not thinking of tomorrow's fuel, the school fees, the food, the bills. I'm not... I can see my wife. I can see my kids. None of those things are an issue in the back of my mind. Yeah. Then, hey, what's up? What's going on with you? Oh, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. Because of the but hard wiring also, and how most yes, relationships, relationship I mean, dynamics are. Yeah, but there's a lot of gender role there as well. Like it is. Like the provider, that a man has to be the provider. So yeah. that puts a lot of pressure on But that's men. that's mostly what happens in in uh, religious or traditional settings. Yeah. Yeah, and mm, I had another point. I think, yes, I know the point. The, the point I wanted to make is... Um, with that role of being the provider and fixing things, men are also often lo- only look, thinking of solutions, solutions, solutions. While in this case, the woman might just, just want to be listened to or the partner just want to be listened to. Mm-hmm. We don't need solutions. And we have that too. That I bring Out of something, finance even, right? Out of even the yeah, finance. Aside yeah, aside from finance. We're putting I mean, the finance on the side. Just listening and solution basically we're talking about now. Yes, because yeah. that is also... So, but it is linked to this scenario because he feels in the pressure to provide and wants to fix things while she just maybe wants to be listened to listen to and reflect on, hey, how did we get here? What can we, you know, how do we feel about it? What does it mean for us? Like as two people being yeah. in a, a union. <laughs> 
Um, but really have that as well, that I come with something and Kwame immediately jumps to, okay, but you can do this, you can do that. Da -da 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 -da. And I'm just like, <laughs> great. But I just wanted to, I know that I will move to solutions in a bit, but I just wanted to share what has been on my mind and how I feel about it. And, and yeah, I just wanted you to listen to it and just like, you know, assure me or just giving me some kind of comfort, not necessarily a solution, but some kind of comfort. Yeah, because sometimes like a hug or like saying, oh, but you're doing great. That oh, on itself okay. can already be a solution. Yeah. Hearing like all is well, you've got this, I know you can do this. And I think we, we had to learn the hard way that to check in, like, what do you need? And I think we're slowly... We're still doing it. Yeah, we're slowly bringing it in. So when he... Grabbing's coping mechanism, aside from distracting, is also, like, being very practical, like, functional. Like, okay, let's do this. One, two, three, da, 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 and then we do it like this. That's because he doesn't like to... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to... Um, to see me suffer, and that's where it comes from. So he sees yeah. me in pain or in worry, and then he's like, I have to fix this. Yeah, let's just take it away. Yeah. But again, my coping mechanism is sometimes feeling it, and that will fuel me into taking it on and f navigating it. So that's also one, how it connects. Yeah. So what was the question again? How do you... <laughs> yeah, you can check. I lost the question. Mm. Oh, do you prioritize your spouse? A whole other question. Do you prioritize your sp your spouse' emotional well being? Yeah. Yeah, we do. In the beginning, in the beginning, it was it was of course obviously blocked a lot by our own judgment and prejudices. Yeah. But now it's. Um, I think I, I try, like I try to check in with you. We all try to check in, especially. I but mean, you, do, now you do way better with checking in. Yeah, you do way better with affirmed. checking in. <laughs> um, well, it's something I really know. Uh, come on, it's not a firm issue. Like, it's just the truth. It's something I really admire about you. Like, you really do check in. So, thank you. Yeah. You're making me shy on, on tape. Uh, yes, I like to check in with you. How was your day? How has it been? And I also notice when things... Okay, I'm not saying... I can see in the future, but I know Kwame very well. And with some things like a certain situation, I know it will get too demanding or I foresee some things just because I know him, how he works. So then I check in a little bit more because I feel like you'll get to a point where you need more support maybe. Yeah. And so if I can give an example of what we're yeah, currently sure. now in, so I'm working a nine to five in an office and Kwame is a freelancer. So most of the times he's a lot with Eli and he's doing amazing. Let me tell you that. So it's not about that. I'm worried about him or that are at home or anything. He's doing amazing. It's just that I think it's not healthy to only be a parent. And because Kwame is also creative, that was fuels him, that what moves him. And I foresee, but keep an eye on this channel, <laughs> that we need to get more help so Kwame can also fuel or like nourish his creative side. Yeah. And that point is going to come. And I'm, I don't know when yet, but... Yes. So now we finally, I was finally able to talk to him <laughs> to a few days help. ago to consider maybe a bit more help. So his mom is helping us out, which is great, but she doesn't live in Accra. So we're trying so to also see us, yeah. uh, how to go about that. So that's something I foresee. So in that way, I think ahead of, hmm, this is great being a new dad, but can he only be a dad? I'm not sure if that is the way to go. And then I try to prioritize it and check in with you even before is, you is, get to the point. Which of, is fair, but I have also assured her that, I mean... I had a lot of things planned this year until Eli came. And then, you know, you, you still think that you're going to be able to do things a certain way. And then when you're in it, you realize that, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe you need to re-strategize. So in re-strategizing, I have 
like, you know, settled with myself. Like I've made peace with myself with mm -hmm. the fact that in his first year, which is very formative or very important, I'm going to be more present as in home with yeah. him because I'm a freelancer. Work is coming. But how work is coming in for me is like I, I can deliver in the night or like I can... No, I know, I know. You're more flexible. I know yeah, I'm very, very, very flexible. And that's what the situation is But now. sometimes with creativity or creative projects, you need to kind of... Be doing more. Yes, immerse in it. And yeah. if you have a five-month-old... It's difficult to immerse in things. Even for me, when I'm in the office, it's always there. And I'm not even physically present. So yeah. that's what I just foresee. But I have to give you credit because one of the... I think one of your coping mechanisms outside of distracting is also adapting. You oh, yeah. adapt very well to new situations. Quickly. Yes. That because also of, leans on the functional side of you. Yes, like, okay, of th this is what it is. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, the emotions won't solve anything at the moment. Yeah. Can we just do this? Can we eat? Can we, you know... Yeah, you're very practical. Well, There's my just, emotions are all over the place. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so I lost that, the that, No, these are the two question. scenarios. Um, no, no, no. There's a second question on this particular scenario? Yes. Yeah, so I think we... we. How do you support them during difficult times? I think we, we've, we've discussed we've that. On it. And then um, do you actively work on building emotional intimacy? I think we do. Yeah, we do. Often when we have... Uh, something one of us is dealing with something and we talk about it that afterwards and we gain new insights from it like yeah. you can just snuggle up and like and now because we don't have a lot of time or free time on our hands we do things that we can both be in the same room and have eli in the same room which is technically we yeah. either eat in the same room with him or we eat while watching an episode of something yeah i think or that's, we just chill in yeah. one place together we try to, be, because you're taking care of like a, such a small person, like you can be all over the place, like one person in the kitchen. Da, 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 da. So we try to build these moments of either eating together, even though it's not one person might be occupied with the baby, but or we watch something at the end of the day. I think it's a nice ritual as well, yeah. even though I fall asleep a lot. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we'll be watching TV and Elaine is like, <laughs> yeah. It's just... And then she's, she's also the one with the remote. <laughs> she's holding the remote in. <laughs> Go on. So I think we're building intimacy through that. And yeah, I, I would need to think about more moments where we build emotional intimacy. But I think showing up for one another is the we most do show important up. one. I think, yeah, we do show up. And I think we also keep each other emotionally in check. Like, I, I can be very rigid with task i have to do so i feel at ease like in the house like i have to for example <laughs> walk the dog walk the dog at uh, the end of the day uh, so he really tries to check in with me like are you doing this now because you want to or are you doing it because you feel obliged because i often feel to do, obliged to do stuff yeah and you should do it because you yeah. want to or you feel like doing it not because there's a dog in the house has to be walked at five so i'm checking that yes. box but i have to say it also i don't get to be outside a lot because I work in an office. Yeah. So often, like 80% of the time I do it because I also want to get some fresh air in our crowd. <laughs> yeah. Fresh air and just clear my head a little. There's more than the computer screen. There's more than all these meetings. There's more than all this writing that has to be done. Um, so it, ha it has two, two um, Sides. functions. Yeah. But I like that he... Reminds me that it's okay. It's okay if you don't do it. Leave the dishes or not. Check this box. Oh, that yeah, box. Yes, so I like to do lists. So in a way, we have a bit of a similar coping mechanism with the functionality. Yeah. Because I'm like, if this is in place, then I'll feel good. <laughs> and while <laughs> mine is a bit on the, the opposite side, not if this is in place, then I'll feel good. But it's more like you're feeling bad now, but you need to eat. Yeah. So you, I don't care. You're good at pulling back to like yeah. the, the things you, you really need. You shelve it. Needs. Not if this is in place, I'll feel good. To, to, you, you do it to fix the emotion. I put the emotion down to fix the situation. Like the emotion can wait. Yeah. No, I think, uh, yeah. I think like small tasks in the house where you don't really need to use your head, they help me process through things. Yeah. So I'm also like, if I do these dishes, then I can think about this. Well, I'm just like, the dishes need to be done. <laughs> Forget about yes. this for but now. But you're also good at saying, and I like that, that helps me. 
saying, why are you doing this now? Like, just sit down, woman. Yeah. Rest. Yeah. I got it. Or, like, we're not going to do this today. Tomorrow morning, we'll, Let it be, we'll, yeah. we'll do the dishes. And I'm like, no! <laughs> not the dishes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think um, those are the two scenarios. I really like this conversation. Yes, I'm so grateful yeah. for. I really like this how counseling. we're we're. Um, Maybe we should have done counseling. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> how we're doing online counseling? I'm very curious to hear if people recognize stuff from our conversation, or that they're like, "Wow, this is very different than how I moved through." these issues mm -hmm. i'm just curious yeah we're just we're just curious because we didn't get an opportunity to have this but in talking about this we realized that yeah. we're already living it yeah or doing it kind of yeah i think i mean i do see like the added value of counseling like having a third person look at how you interact and it's pointing way things better out. a neutral person just yeah, yeah. because things that. get heated i mean in every marriage i'm sure yeah it also keeps things spicy <laughs> spicy <laughs> Yeah, so that's it for this edition of the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm looking at this camera. I'm looking at this camera. <laughs> and we're going to, you know, maybe do other scenarios. Um. Oh, we'll do the other three. I'm really excited. Like, I would even want to continue, yeah. but let's cut it here. Otherwise, series. yeah. Oh, there's no otherwise. It's just let's leave some for the other yeah. times. We've, we've tickled your taste buds, but we'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Where are we? Are this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I still have to get you still the camera. Um, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Curious to hear uh, what you think in the C section. We do have more videos. Come we'll put them up here. <laughs> and catch you later. Bye. 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 In the C section. See you in the C section. Uh -oh. <laughs>